Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the 8th lecture on the and this course and under the in this uh, particular lecture uh, we will be discussing uh, different multispectral scanners and different imaging devices which are um, very popular nowadays. Uh, if you remember that uh, we discuss in previous lectures that uh, two types of uh, remote sensing is possible one is uh, passive remote sensing and then active remote sensing. So, the sensors are also accordingly and uh, there are uh, two major categories of sensors one is the passive sensor very popular one which we will see one by one and then active sensors. Now, both of these uh, passive and active sensors one are the non-scanning and the scanning type. Similarly, in case of active sensors uh, some or uh, some of them are non-scanning and uh, might be scanning sensors. Then when we come for uh, uh, in this uh, non-scanning we can have non-imaging sensors, we can have imaging sensors again in case of scanning mainly imaging sensors. In case of non-scanning, uh, non non-imaging sensors and uh, scanning imaging uh, and different sensors are there. So, uh, especially if we take the uh, sensors which are passive uh, and then like microwave, uh, passive microwave uh, radiometers or uh, sensors are there which are uh, passive sensors, non-scanning, non-imaging. Uh, there are some satellites uh, like GRACE and others which are in uh, uh, they work for the uh, gravi uh, uh, gravity properties of the earth. So, there are non-imaging, non-scanning sensors. Uh, similarly, in, in case of non-scanning imaging sensors, you are having cameras, maybe uh, monochromatic cameras, natural color infrared, color infrared and the others. So, these are uh, the sensors which are on board of different satellites. Then uh, scanning sensors are also there like imaging, image plane scanning, TV camera, solid scanner, object plane scanning, optical, mechanical sensors, microwave. So, initially when remote sensing started we had these opto mechanical scanners. Now, later on we are having non scanning imaging sensors uh, like uh, all these. Then in, in the category under the category of active sensors two types scanning non scanning under this non scanning we are having non imaging. So, like microwave radiometer, microwave altimeter and so on. Similarly, in case of uh, active scanning, imaging, object plane scanning, real aperture radar or synthetic aperture radar. So, radar remote sensing uh, we uh, the examples we saw about like radar set or our Indian example rice set, NV set and uh, sentinel all they work in this uh, uh, synthetic aperture radar that the, that means the sensors is active, the sensor is scanning and uh, it is basically synthetic as having object plane scanning. And uh, there might be ima uh, this is scanning imaging, but image plane is scanning. Uh, so, these are the different types of sensors are can be there, but the most popular one are uh, these ones of two mechanical uh, they were there, then synthetic aperture radar and other microwave sensors. We will see examples of uh, these different types of sensors associated with different types of satellites in initial stages of development of remote sensing and later. As you can see that in case of active remote sensing basically the pulse is sent by the instrument or uh, on board the satellite and then whatever is returned back it is recorded and this is how uh, you, uh, you acquire the data of radar data. Uh, or active remote sensing data. Whereas, in case of passive remote sensing and uh, the main source of uh, radiation is available through or energy is available through the sun and then we record uh, different uh, uh, type different signatures having different kind of reflection emission and so on so forth. So, two major types active remote sensing and passive remote sensing. The um, um, uh, 80 90 percent of remote sensing is uh, which we are doing is passive, but nowadays because of SAR interferometry 
active is also very popular. We will see the examples how these have been applied. Active sensors some uh, some uh, in different part of spectrum uh, EM spectrum which are there especially the radar one the synthetic aperture radar side lead looking aperture radar are there and f different bands k x a, s and l band k k u and c band c band is very very popular l band is very popular among radar remote sensing also x band but the, the c band example are many more uh, there are some other parts of em spectrum but uh, may not be having uh, satellite sensors on board but maybe uh, through lower atmosphere or through aircrafts can be acquired data. Uh, whereas, in case of passive sensors, uh, we are having a most popular one are visible near infrared spectrometers are there in this range but that means the 0.4 micrometer uh, to 1.1 micrometer or 400 uh, to 1100 uh, nanometers. Microwave radiometers are there and uh, then thermal infrared sensors are also there which is having between 8 to 14 micrometer. So, these are all uh, passive sensors which are shown in blue color and uh, these red one are the active sensors which are shown and uh, e part of EM spectrum uh, both frequency based and wavelength based is also shown here. So, as mentioned that the passive sensors the sun's energy is either reflected in the visible length or absorbed and then re-emitted in the thermal infrared wavelength. And the remote sensing systems which measure energy that is naturally available are called passive sensors. Passive sensors can only be used to detect energy when naturally occurring energy is available. And for all reflected energy this uh, can only take place during the time when the sun is illuminating the earth. So, only that means it is possible in the daytime. Uh, in case of visible near infrared images, but uh, in case of uh, thermal infrared that can come work in night time as well. And there is no reflected energy available from the sun at the night. And the energy that is naturally emitted uh, such as the thermal in especially in the thermal infrared portion of EM spectrum <coughs> can be detected day or night time as long as the amount of energy is large enough to be recorded because during this emitted energy is not relatively very large and therefore, uh, it is uh, one has to get that much of energy. So, that it can be recorded by the sensors which are around 850 kilometer deep in space. Uh, this is uh, again uh, uh, passive uh, example of passive remote sensing and especially with the Landsat 8 OLI series is given and uh, that uh, different bands uh, are collecting information reflective information reflective data at different uh, part of EM spectrum like band 1 uh, between 0.43 to 0.45 and uh, like band 7 2.11 to 2.29. And different channels uh, uh, the data is collected one may create a false color composite in the previous lecture we have discussed in length. Uh, how false color composites are created, what are the advantages of uh, false color composite and why basically false color composites are created. And ultimately you can create such colored false color images uh, which are very useful for image interpretation. This uh, we have already covered that uh, you involve green channel, red channel in a standard false color composite and uh, near infrared channel assign blue, green and red color respectively and ultimately you end up with a standard false color composite image. Now, uh, in, a, in a false color composite image uh, the same area may look like this, but in a thermal infrared image in the night time the same area may look like this like an x-ray kind of thing. So, altogether uh, different appearance of, Im of uh, earth's objects in different part of EM spectrum also in daytime and night time. Whereas, active sensors provide their own energy as mentioned earlier, uh, which are having their own uh, uh, source of energy they send the energy pulse. So, sensor emits radiation which is directed towards the target to be investigated and these are also called ranging devices 
and uh, because the, re the radiated reflected from that target is detected, the return uh, beam is detected and measured by the sensor. That is why they are called uh, your ranging devices. Advantages of active sensors uh, which includes the ability to obtain measurement anytime because the energy source is within your hands. So, whenever you want to measure you send the pulse and uh, whenever it will return you record it and uh, you measure the distance. So, and uh, so that is the advantage that ability to obtain measurement anytime it is uh, day or night time also regardless of time of the day or season. Another advantage of uh, this thing is uh, that uh, in microwave region uh, where these uh, most of the active sensors are there uh, you, uh, you have the advantage that uh, the wavelength is much larger. So, the clouds, gas particles, dust particles will not and create any scattering or absorption and you get a, a very nice clear pictures in this uh, through these uh, radar remote sensing satellites. Except active sensors can also be used to examine wavelengths that are not sufficiently provided by the sun such as microwaves or better control the way target is illuminated. So, the, the way we want to illuminate a target that can also be designed or decided by the, uh, the sensor or operator of uh, that instrument. However, the active sensors require generation of a fairly large amount of energy to adequately illuminate targets. Because a satellite uh, on board uh, uh, the sensors on board of a satellite especially I am talking radar satellites uh, then large amount of energy is required uh, so that uh, images can be acquired by that. So, that is uh, one limitation of this thing. And uh, uh, most common active sensors in the radar range of EM spectrum are synthetic aperture radar uh, as mentioned like uh, NVSET, like Sentinel, like radar set, RI set all they use this one. Example of our own Indian remote sensing satellite of part of Tirpura from RI set 1 that is the image acquired on 22nd September 2012. And, uh, as you can see that there is no effect of any effect of atmosphere and especially in this part of the country most of the time you are having clouds. But in microwave region in active remote sensing cloud will not affect and therefore you see a complete clear terrain and all geological structures and you know plunging folds and plunging antiforms in forms can easily be identified. Uh, on such images. If you uh, go for corresponding uh, images in uh, passive, uh, uh, passive satellite data like in visible channels or near infrared, in near infrared you would find that it, these parts are fully covered with vegetation. So, a masking effect you will see uh, and cloud problems are also very common in this part of the country. Whereas, in radar remote sensing clouds will not create problem and uh, all these geological structures can be identified very easily. So, there are various advantages of having active sensors. Now, uh, there are multi spectral uh, scanners or sensors systems are there. We started with the MSS multi spectral scanner with Landsat uh, 1. So, uh, these uh, scanning systems uh, are employed uh, or put on a satellite and uh, with the which covers a narrow field of view and sweep over a terrain to produce an image. And there are two types of uh, multispectral uh, data uh, or sensors are there which acquire data either across stress scanning or which we call bisque broom like for example, in case of land set uh, sensor on the land set or along track scanning which was introduced. Uh, through by spot and later on by Econos. So, we call them as post broom. So, bisk broom and post broom scanners. We will see in details what, what are the advantages and disadvantages of these two types of scanning devices in uh, passive remote sensing. Across track uh, you know that uh, if satellite is overpassing like this the, the, the orbit is like this then uh, across track the scanning is done 
and a, a pixel by pixel there is there, there will be a rotating mirror and uh, that uh, you know uh, acquire the images. So, uh, these uh, using a rotating or oscillating mirror such systems can scan terrain along scan lines that are right angles to the flight line or orbital path and this allows scanner to repeatedly measure the energy from one side of the platform to another. So, once uh, the satellite moves then it goes to the next line, the next line and likewise it keep scanning and recording the data or sending data uh, to the earth stations. And this way the data is collected within an arc below the system typically of some 90 degree to 120 degree. But these may introduce some complications or some problems which we will see little later. Incoming energy is separated into several spectral components that are sense independently and non-thermal uh, wavelength component is directed from getting uh, a, through a prism or a different grating and split the energy into continuum of visible, uh, ultraviolet, visible and near infrared bands. At the same time uh, the dichroic uh, grating disperses the thermal component of oncoming signal which is a constituent wavelength. There were a lot of complications were observed with such kind of uh, uh, scanning devices. A, an optical optomechanical scanner is a multispectral radiometer by which images can be recorded using a combination of motion of platform and a rotating or oscillating mirror uh, scanning perpendicular to the flight direction. So, because of this uh, oscillating or uh, mirror rotation. Uh, a lot of uh, problems were observed especially in the Landsat and in the first generation that is Landsat MSS or Landsat 1 which had the MSS sensor. These optomechanical sensors are composed of an optical system, a spectrographic system and a scanning system, detecting system and then reference system. So, multispectral scanner MSS I gave the example thematic mapper of Landsat and uh, a NOAA AVHR are also example of optical mechanical scanners. Another type of scanners and uh, not across uh, track now along track scanning uh, which is a, a is a across track system along track or push broom scanners record multispectral image data along a swath beneath the aircraft. So, you are having a, a array of sensors arranged like this and you acquire line by line and uh, this has made uh, things very uh, easy. So, also similar to use of forward motion of satellite to build up by an image by recording successive scanning lines that are oriented at right angles to the flight direction. However, there is a dis uh, distinct difference between a long track and a cross track system in the manner which each scan line is recorded. Here the uh, uh, an array uh, in a long track uh, system there is no scanning mirror, no oscillating or moving object or optomechanical devices. It is a solid state kind of thing. So, instead of a linear array of detectors used and which is scans directly parallel to the flight line and uh, 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 array normally consists of numerous CCD devices uh, which are positioned throughout this one. So, if I give the example like uh, like you are having a, a CCDs are all, all uh, uh, situated here and the, this is the uh, uh, flight track or, uh, or orbital track of your satellite. So, it keep moving and keep scanning simultaneously all along the line. So, this because it does not involve any oscillating or optomechanical devices that is why the images are of high quality. So, each detector element is dedicated to sensing the energy in a single ground resolution cell along any uh, given scan line. This is and along track scanning devices are nowadays very popular and common in most of these uh, new satellites. So, the examples are shown here and uh, that a linear array or this push broom, brisk broom examples are shown and uh, in hyperspectral area then again the arrays are uh, used. So, that uh, a long track uh, a scanning devices are used whereas, in this one this is rotating mirror. So, uh, different channels are 
uh, different pixels are uh, gathered here, whereas here the entire line or the swath is covered in one go. So, different uh, way of collecting the data. There are advantages with along track scanners. Uh, the linear arrays provide the opportunity for each detector to have a longer dwell time or residence time over which to measure the energy from each ground cell uh, resolution cell. So, that is the advantage with along track scanner enables much stronger signal to be recorded a greater range of levels of signals can be sensed. And this uh, this concept array concept and along track scanning has allowed us to move from relatively coarser resolution data like MSS which was an optomechanical across track scanning to along track scanning systems which has allowed us to go for higher and higher spatial resolution. So, this, this is because of it enables us for a stronger signal to be detected by these sensors because stay time uh, while a satellite is moving is much more compared to a cross track scanners. And this uh, leads uh, to better spatial and radiometric resolution. In addition, the geometric integrity, radiometric resolution basically here the meaning is the quantization of uh, uh, the pixel. So, instead of having a 6 bit image, 7 bit image, it is possible to have 8 bit, 10 bit, even 11 bit images. So, the higher radiometric resolution, better spatial resolution became possible because of along track scanning systems. In addition, the geometric integrity the, uh, is also better in case of along track uh, scanning devices. So, that is why uh, they became very popular in many, many of sensors on board of different satellite. Further advantage is the geometry along each scan line is similar to that of characterizing an aerial mapping camera because CCDs are solid state, there is no moving part and uh, they are generally smaller in size and, uh, and uh, weight and require less power for operation. So, another advantage is that they are lightweight and uh, they are compact and uh, the and the weight of a, a sensor on board of a satellite is also less. It requires less power for operation. Uh, however, there are uh, one uh, this one disadvantage to uh, uh, push broom scanner is need to calibrate many more detectors because instead of one detector in case of a cross track, you are having arrays of detectors, and now these detectors should perform uniformly, and therefore before launch, launching of any such sensors, such scanning devices, their calibration, very high quality calibration is required. Otherwise, if two are two adjacent CCDs are performing differently, they will acquire data differently and your image will have a lot of problems. This problem was recently observed in case of uh, uh, Landsat uh, 8 uh, uh, images. Uh, 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 and uh, then uh, these uh, uh, the corrections of such images becomes really very very difficult. So, this brings to the end of these uh, different types of multispectral scanners, optomechanical devices, linear array devices, their advantages and disadvantages. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.